Hello everyone, welcome to this tutorial. In this video I will continue from where we stopped last time and um, this time we are going to work out um, an example with some values and see um, how the equations works on and the output looks like. So like uh, like the previous video, so here we have the initial position of the vehicle the initial state at time zero and uh, let's assume that the state vector that we are uh, trying to estimate contains uh, two signals or has dimension of two so the first element in the state vector is the position and the second element is the velocity so at the uh, time zero we have uh, we assume that our initial position is zero and the velocity is 2 meter per second which means that at this exact instance we know that uh, or we have an information that says that the vehicle is moving with the velocity of 2 meter per second so the position here is the position along the x-axis and velocity is also the velocity along the x-axis and here we have the covariance state covariance and it's only diagonal here which uh, means that at this time instance specifically there is no any correlation between the uh, between the states uh, known yet so this is the initial state and this is the initial covariance then after a time interval of capital T which um, we assume in this example that it's one second the vehicle moved to this position and just to remind you that um, the position actually is the integration of the velocity over time so the position at time zero is simply the um, the addition or the integration of the velocity at time zero at this time multiplied by the time interval so and this is the integration so every time we integrate the velocity we come up with the position and that's simply the model that we will put here in the F matrix the state transition matrix and um, this summation here uh, you can see clearly in the first row here in the F matrix so because um, you know in the dot product we multiply rho by a colon and here um, we multiply this by the position so one by the position here which is simply this term and then plus this element times this element this is the uh, sample time or the time interval so here we substitute the capital T with one so it will be time t equal 1 multiplied by the velocity here which is 2 so it's which is basically this term and th the result of this summation is simply 2 because here the position is 0 plus 1 times 2 which is 2 and the second row here uh, simply says that the new the new velocity the new predicted velocity is uh, the same as the previous velocity from the last time so that's why this model is called the constant velocity model because with every uh, time step we assume that the position the position didn't change we use the same position as before and we do the prediction based on it and here um, this is the equation that we discussed last time so here we added the process noise covariance and here we did the transformation to the uh, initial covariance using the F matrix and so here does uh, let's re revise this so here this is the, the transition matrix here the process covariance and the results are um, so here that will be 2 meter and the velocity is constant so the vehicle moved from position 0 to position 2 here so that's a prediction 
and uh, in the prediction uh, the velocity didn't change so it's exactly two like the in the initial state in the um, the predicted covariance you can see here that because of the um, of the correlation in the f matrix which is basically the relation between the position and velocity so position is calculated also based on velocity which is expressed by this off diagonal element here so because of this off diagonal element so this multiplication result in some values here in the off diagonal and which means that now the the predicted covariance has uh, a correlation as well so to visualize this and uh, to understand it more so let's here do some plotting for uh, the um, position uh, versus velocity profile and at the time zero here we plot the initial state and the initial covariance so since the initial covariance here has the same values and here are zeros so no correlation so it looks like a circle like this and the arrows that I drawn here so this is the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix of this covariance matrix so you see here that because the eigenvectors are horizontal this one is horizontal this one is vertical so no correlation at all between the position and velocity known at this time and after the time interval t so after the addition of the process noise covariance we come up with this uh, predicted covariance and this predicted state so predicted state is at position 2 velocity 2 so exactly velocity is unchanged and the covariance here is now tilted so this tilt is because of the correlation and now the eigenvectors of this covariance matrix um, you see, can see that it's um, as tilted as well with some angle here and um, now you can clearly see that depending on the position so if the um, as long as the position changes and you project it to this eigenvector here this one you can come up with different velocities so the velocity change based on the position according to this eigenvector and this correlation um, and covariance so the next step when we receive a new measurement at this place so um, so let's assume that the measurement received is not two so previously we predicted that the car now is at position two which means that the predicted the predicted measurement is two while the actual measurement from the GPS says that the position is not at two but it's at 2.25 meters which is 25 centimeters off compared to the predicted measurement here and the R matrix here that's the measurement covariance that we uh, measured or assumed in this example uh, at least so that's the predicted state that's the measurement model the, that's the predicted measurement that's the actual measurement and the measurement noise covariance so now we do the uh, calculation for the residual that we discussed in the part one of the tutorial um, and that's the residual covariance and here we can see that we have 25 centimeter uh, residual um, because of the correction and here the the H matrix dot product with the predicted covariance with the correlation here that we see multiplied by the transpose of the um, the H matrix plus the measurement noise covariance the R matrix and now the uh, the matrix S which is the innovation covariance is one by one matrix because the dimension of the measurement vector is one so 
Um, so and uh, S will be a square matrix with the same dimension as the measurement vector, so it will be one by one. So it would be this value. So now to visualize again the covariances. So now we receive the measurement. So it's at this place. And here we draw it like uh, just a, a vertical straight line because it's only position. So there is no uh, velocity at all in, the, uh, in this measurement as we assumed at least. So it's only position, so that's why we draw it vertical like this. So now we do the correction step, which starts by calculating the Kalman gain based on the equations that we discussed in part one. Um, and here we uh, have the, the um, the weights or the values for the Kalman gain. So here we see that we, for the position, we it's uh, very close to one, which means that we trust the position from the GPS um, uh, more than um, the predicted value, and that's why we will give to the position state um, uh, so much correction. Um, based on the GPS, while in the um, velocity state, um, we have here some correction value. It's very close to 0 0.5, but here it's say, it simply says that um, we will add like uh, by percentage of 50% from the measurement residual uh, this um, a correction to the um, to the velocity. And uh, that will end up that we have a position state after correction to be 2.24. So it's very close to 0.25 uh, because the, the measurement noise covariance that we assumed in the previous slide is 0.01. So it's and the more you decrease it uh, to be close to zero, the more this value will be uh, very close to 2.25, which is the actual measurement. But since we still have some uncertainty in our measurement, so um, this also is reflected here. So it will be some value between the prediction and the, uh, the measurement here, so something somewhere in between where exactly it depends on the weighting the ratio between the covariance here and the covariance here so that's basically the Kalman gain so the here the ratio between the predicted covariance and the inverse of the um, the innovation covariance so that's the ratio i mean um, and here the velocity you, you see that it's now changed so it's not two but now it's a, a value uh, slightly uh, bigger because uh, if you think it if you think about it intuitively so we predicted that the position is here but when we measured from the gps which we trust more than our prediction the measurement says that uh, okay you are not actually here but you are here so you are a further steps ahead of the the position that you predicted which means that the velocity that you used for prediction is not actually correct and it should be slightly more because the position is ahead um, of the uh, the predicted position so instead of two it will be two plus some value which is reflected here or estimated here so this uh, velocity value simply is the value that we need in order that after time interval t the vehicle moves from this position to this position here that we estimated so that's it um, and now the the estimated covariance is the predicted covariance and we subtract from it this term so now the the covariance decreased as well because now we have more trust 
in the estimated state after the correction and to visualize um, so now let's uh, visualize again the uh, co the covariances uh, of the in the position versus velocity profile and the last time we received the measurement then here we have the estimated new state and that's the new estimated covariance that we have here so that's the a corrected state that is that's the corrected covariance so now the covariance is now less than the predicted covariance as we see there is a little bit of correlation as uh, is as are indicated by the off diagonals here which you can see that it's a bit um, tilted this new rate covariance and the position is at 2.24 so it's something between the measurement and the prediction and the velocity is now slightly higher than the one from the prediction and the initial state so it's now along the eigenvector here so at this place so that's um, that's simply the um, how state estimation uh, is done um, and here in this example we explained based on the position and velocity but uh, state estimation can be anything so you can do online calibration for robot states or vehicle or autonomous vehicle states uh, during motion using the same approach if you want to do calibration for the sensors uh, for the um, let's say for example the wheel tires or for the uh, offsets of the IMU or you can do it for many applications so with the same concept so so that's it for this tutorial um, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and see you next time